Good morning all. Today I'm planning to do um, a very simple electronic kit build. It's this. It's um, it, well, it's really just some flashing LEDs. There are 12 LEDs in here. I think they're blue. There are three transistors, three capacitors and I think six resistors. And that's it. It's very, very simple. So this kit um, has been kindly supplied by icstation.com. Um, it's part number 5002, so let's take a quick look at that uh, on IC Station's website. So here it is on uh, icstation.com, and this is the Blue LED Circular Lamp DIY Kit Funny Electronic Kit. Uh, just $2.16, and that's with free shipping. Right, let's see what's inside the bag, and then I want to say a little bit about how I intend to do this kit. Now this kit is obviously very very simple um, and I'm going to pitch this video at someone or viewers who've never actually done any electronics before at all. Now that doesn't mean I'm going to be doing all the um, the resistor color band identification on all, all that stuff because I believe that that actually would be better spun off into a separate video. So I will very briefly mention how to get the components in the right place and the right way round, and that's going to be about it. So I'm just letting uh, the soldering iron warm up. Today's sponge is the lopsided smiley face. Looks a bit like me, that one. And I'm just looking through these components. Um, I've noticed something a bit odd about the transistors. So we have uh, two 9013s here and an 8050. Now they're all NPN, so I don't suppose it matters terribly that um, there are two different types here. The positions on the board are just marked uh, V1, V2 and V3 and there is an indication of um, the shape of the transistor so that we can at least get these in the right way around and they're all NPN so I think that should be relatively straightforward. So what we're aiming to do here is to get all of these bits, these components onto this board by poking the uh, metal legs through the holes, uh, glue them on the back, we call it soldering in, uh, soldering, uh, we use uh, molten metal, mostly lead, so it melts at a fairly low temperature, nevertheless the soldering iron is still very hot, so you don't want to uh, touch the hot end with your hands, get all these parts in, get them the right way round, uh, now most of these components are actually orientation sensitive so we do need to get them the right way around but they're generally marked with either a flat uh, or this this cross hatched area the resistors it doesn't actually matter which way around we put them but there are two different values so we need to get the uh, the right resistor in the right hole right I'm going to start with the resistors uh, there are two types here there's one well, there are three called 10K and there are three called 470. So let's find the 470s first since they're all uh, grouped together. So these are the 470 ohm resistors. They're marked yellow, purple, brown. Um, you can look up these color codes on a suitable resistor color code website and I'll uh, try and find one and put a link to that in the description below. So these metal legs need to be bent and you can simply do that by hand and then once you've formed it into this shape you can place it into the two holes on the board, push it in and we can now solder that on the other side. So I've put all three of the 470 ohm resistors in the board Now I'm going to flip it over, push it down onto my mat and to hold it in place I'm going to use some blue tack which I find very useful or holding things while I solder them. So let's solder. Uh, wipe the iron on the sponge to clean the tip and then we uh, put a bit of solder into the area where I'm going to solder, let it melt and then pull the soldering iron away. Let's try another one. Solder and iron together, feed solder in until we've got um, what looks like the right amount around the leg coming through the pad and then just move the soldering iron away and once again feed solder in until the solder joint is nice and circular pull the iron away 
And let's do the last one. That one looks a little bit messy. I'm just going to reheat that, reflow it a bit. That looks better. And that's those done. Right, now we cut off the excess leads with wire cutters. And you can save the little cutoffs into a pot if you want, uh, because they can come in handy for creating little wire links in some boards. I don't think we'll need any wire links on this board, but there they are, cut off flush. So next we want these three resistors which are marked 10K. So 10K means 10,000 ohms and the color code in this case is brown, black, orange. So here are the three 10K resistors. I've put them into the board. I haven't soldered them yet. Now I've put all these resistors uh, the same way around so that they their color codes read left to right. But with resistors, it doesn't actually matter which way around you put them. They're non-polarized. I've just done that for neatness. Right, let's solder the uh, 10K resistors exactly the same as the 470 ohm resistors. Just get solder fed into the pad and then withdraw the iron and the solder once the pad looks nice and neat. So let's do the transistors next. Now these are all the same type of transistor. Uh, one of them was a different uh, actual part number, but they're all NPN, so it should be fine. The only thing with these is that we have to get them the right way around. So we need to get it that way around. So the flat on the body m lines up with the flat on the silk screen markings on the board. If I put that the wrong way around, this circuit wouldn't work. Now, interestingly, um, they've got two of the transistors one way around with their flats pointing out to the right, and the other one the other way around with its flat pointing out to the left. They probably did that to make it easier to run all these uh, copper tracks around the various components, but it is slightly awkward and can catch you out if you're not watching carefully. So certainly watch out for orientation on the transistors. Now the legs on the transistors are much closer spaced on the actual body of the transistor itself than the holes on the board. So they don't appear to fit very well and you have to actually uh, bend the legs out. So on the other side, they're all splayed out, but this is entirely normal. And it's generally speaking done, uh, well here it's done so that they can run tracks between the pads for the transistors, but it's often done so that these pads aren't too close together. Otherwise it's possible to get solder bridging across from one pad to another. And then of course the circuit won't work. Now these transistors aren't gonna fall out of the board because of the way their legs are bent out. Um, but I'm still using blue tack to hold the board down just so that it doesn't slide around while I solder these transistors. I'll probably solder one leg on each transistor in turn and then cut them off with the cutters because that A gets that leg out of the way for soldering the next one and B it allows the transistor to cool down a little bit between uh, my soldering because some components, transistors are one of them, are quite heat sensitive. Let's do the next three. That's one, two, three. That one's fine. Cut those off. So let's cut off the leg of each transistor that I've soldered so far. My cutters, I think, are a little bit blunt. They're not working terribly well. Okay, that leaves uh, six more legs to solder. And the last three legs get those soldered, get the excess uh, wires cut off, and the transistors are done. Right, next let's do the uh, capacitors. These are marked C1, C2, and C3. Here are the capacitors, these green things. Now the markings on these, they're all the same, um, is 16 volts, 47 microfarads. But the most important thing for building this kit is to get the negative side of the capacitor to the negative side of the marking on the silk screen. Now there isn't really much to tell you which is negative. On the capacitor there's a little minus sign and a black bar. On the board there's just a crosshatch area but that's generally acknowledged to be negative. Uh, the minus sign of course is negative on the capacitor itself. 
But this is something that it would be well worth checking. So I've printed out um, the page from IC Station's website and there is here a list of parts and there's also um, a circuit diagram. So we can take a look at that. So by looking at the circuit diagram we can see that the capacitor's positive side is connected to the 470 ohm resistor and the negative side, they haven't put a minus in there but it must be uh, negative because that's positive, is connected to the 10k resistor. So by looking at the board uh, and flipping, picking a capacitor, this one for example, and flipping it over backwards and forwards a few times, we can see that the crosshatch area there is connected through to this uh, last component in this row of six, and the last component is the 10k. So the crosshatch area is connected to the 10k, so that must be the negative. Now you can also tell from uh, this photograph that was also on the website, you can see here that the capacitors here are black, they're a different color, but at one point there's this band, now it's actually a white band probably with black minus signs in it. This one's slightly different, this has uh, black bands with a white ellipse and then black minus signs, but uh, capacitors are always marked with their negative along this band and you can see that that's facing in the direction of the transistors. So on the board uh, I've got the same thing, I've got the band there facing in the direction of the transistors. So this is just another cross check to make sure that we got that component in the right way round. And uh, just a final thing which is worth knowing, uh, very often the negative lead of a capacitor will be cut shorter and the positive lead will be longer. So that's just yet another thing you can do to check that you've got this thing the right way around. Right, there are the three capacitors uh, in the board. I just now need to solder their leads on the underside. I think I'm going to need some bigger uh, pieces of uh, blue tack here because these are quite tall components. So uh, let's stick that down on my mat and then solder those in. So finally we have the light emitting diodes. Now there are 12 of these. I'm pretty sure they're blue. Um, here are the positions for them. They just go around in a circle. The silk screen on the board is marked with a flat area and there is a flat area on the plastic of this. I'll show that in a moment. Now it looks to me like the flat area is facing up on every single one of these so they should all go in the same way round. And uh, you can see here with the aid of a magnifying glass that there is a flat um, molded into the body of the LED, the light emitting diode, so that must correspond with the markings on the board. Now one thing it's always worth doing with LEDs is to test them, and you can do that with most LEDs fairly easily. Just take a, a CR2032 or similar coin cell. It's probably worth using one that's relatively flat and just simply putting the long leg of the LED on the long side of the battery, that's the positive, and uh, the LED should light up. And we can go through all 12 of these and just test that they're all working. So that one's good, and uh, that one's good, and that one's good. So there are actually three identifying features on an LED that show you which way around to put it. There's the flat uh, molded onto the plastic body there. There's also the shape of the metalwork inside. You can see that on the side which has the flat, you also have the larger piece of metal. Uh, that's often called the anvil because it's sort of anvil shaped. And also on that side, you've got the shorter leg. So I've put all the uh, LEDs on the board. I've not soldered them in yet. I'm just doing a final check to make sure I've got the flat on the body of the LED lining up with the flat on the silk screen markings. I think they're all okay. Now I'm going to solder them in. And uh, for this I'm just using a little piece of blue tack to hold in a pair of LEDs and then I'm soldering, at the moment I'm just soldering one leg on those LEDs and I'll go around uh, each of the six pairs getting all the LEDs soldered on one leg reasonably flat to the board and then I might make a small adjustment when I solder the uh, second leg. So I've soldered uh, one leg of each LED. Now if any weren't lying completely flat to the board I'd have an opportunity now to uh, hold the LED onto the board and just retouch the soldered joint so that I can just push the LED 
flat but they all seem to be uh, reasonably flat and lined up quite well so I think I'm just going to go ahead and solder the second LED leg on each one of these 12. Uh, since that's the last thing I'm going to do apart from this little two pin connector I'll do it with the camera running try and think of something to say while I'm soldering these 12 legs uh, yes this is a little three transistor ring oscillator I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do all these with the board facing this way around I'll try it so what happens is each stage turns the LED on and that creates a a signal to the next stage and it flips to the next stage and then to the third and then it repeats back on the first. Yes, I think I'm going to turn that round. Okay, let's do these remaining LED legs and then we'll need to find some power. Now I seem to remember from the circuit diagram that it can take anything from 2 volts to 12 volts. Um, let's just check that. Right, those are all soldered in. Let's crop them off. Uh, actually, according to the circuit diagram, it takes anywhere from 3 volts to 12 volts. So I could use a, a 9 volt battery for this. See if I've got one to hand. Crop these remaining LED legs off. And we're ready to solder on that connector. Now, although it doesn't matter which way around that connector's fitted, because it is only just two bits of metal in a plastic carrier, um, it once I've soldered it, it will very much matter which way around I connect the battery. We don't want to be connecting uh, the battery the wrong way around. It may not do any harm, but equally it might damage some components. So I'm just going to solder that connector in. Yes, I thought I'd seen it say 2 to 12 volts somewhere, and it actually says it there on the PCB itself, DC 2 to 12 volts. Well now one of these little coin cells um, is 3 volts, so it should work on that. Now the positive of the coin cell is this large rear surface. So if I attach that to the positive connection and the negative to the negative connection, it should fire up. And although it works, it is a little bit lackluster. Some of the LEDs aren't very bright. So yeah, let's find um, a battery with some uh, more voltage, with a higher voltage and then these should light up nice and bright. Right, for power, I found this uh, battery box which ends in a 2.1 millimeter uh, DC connector jack, and I've also found this in my box of cables. Well, this happens to be terminated in these uh, DuPont cables, so they'll fit on to these two pins, and I'm sure I took care to put uh, positive here on the center pin, because this is almost certainly gonna be center positive. Let's just go for it and switch it on. Right, here we go. Let's plug that in. And it's a fair bit faster because we've got uh, more voltage and more current flowing and quite a lot brighter. And the LEDs just cycle around in groups of four, three groups of four. So there are actually three static patterns and it just looks like the LEDs are rotating. Quite a nice effect. Now that's interesting, I've just noticed that two of the transistors are specified as 9013 and one of them is specified as an 8050, both in the parts list and also on the circuit diagram. And uh, the 8050 is specified as V3. Now I've actually put my 8050 in the position V1, but it doesn't really matter because this circuit is completely symmetrical. You've got three identical blocks all linked to each other with one of the capacitors. So it doesn't matter that I put the 8050 in the wrong position. Now, can you think of a reason why two of the transistors would be one uh, type and one of the transistors would be a different type? I've got my own thoughts about it. Cheerio.